high in the mountains of China, a unique school turns crouching tigers and hidden dragons into masters of martial arts. Here, amid the fabulous temples and shrines of sacred Mount Wudang, Kung Fu masters teach young girls and boys the secrets of their ancient wisdom. Sacred Mount Wudang is located in the heart of central China, in Hubei province. Its 72 peaks cover an area of 312 square kilometers. The tallest rises over 1,600 meters, almost a mile above sea level. Ancient Chinese gods are said to reside in the Ten Palaces and more than 1,000 temples on its golden peaks. It was here, amid the temples of Mount Wudang, that some of China's most famous martial arts were born. Wudang is also the birthplace of Taoism, one of China's most ancient religions. Martial arts and religion came together in a fusion that produced the unique styles of Wudang Kung Fu. While the relationship between martial arts and spirituality may seem odd to some, in Chinese belief, martial arts is not a form of violent aggression. It's defensive in nature, a means of self-protection. The Chinese word for martial arts, Wu, actually means to stop fighting. For centuries, Wudang has produced some of China's greatest martial arts masters. And every year, young apprentices from different parts of China come here to live and study. However, while many come, only a few have the qualities needed to become masters. I'm called Jade Dragon. I'm 10. I came here two years ago to learn martial arts. Dutiful Dragon and Little Dragon are 15 years old. They became apprentices six years ago. Dragon is not their real name, nor mine. It's an honorary title given to us by our master. Students live and study at the school. Most return home only during the summer holidays. Fees and living expenses are about 200 US dollars a year. The school is supported by donations and will often even accept poorer students who can't afford the fees. When I was a little boy, I was very weak. I was always sick. So my family sent me here to learn Kung Fu. My father sent me to Wudang. At that time, my family was unable to take care of me, so they sent me here. I wanted to learn Kung Fu because I was bullied. I wanted to fight back. Kung Fu may look easy, but learning it is hard. Each movement must be repeated until you get it right. We have to do three years of basic training. We have to train our bodies and our willpower. Every day we start practicing at 5 in the morning. We have to practice Kung Fu more than six hours a day. And we have to go to school and we have to do chores. It's very hard work. When I first came here, practicing Kung Fu every day was exhausting. It hurt and I wanted to go home. The first time, I didn't make up my bed properly. I was cold 
by my master. The second time, my bed wasn't properly made. I was beaten with a rod thirty times. One reason training is severe is to spot hidden talent. Jade Dragon, Little Dragon, and Dutiful Dragon receive special attention. Their master sees the hidden dragon in them, the potential for them to become the next generation of Wudang masters. Wudang Kung Fu is a powerful force. We have to be very careful in choosing young apprentices. Wudang apprentices must behave properly and have a high standard of moral and spiritual conduct. Otherwise, they will be dangerous to other people. Our master is very strict and demanding, so we have to be very disciplined. In addition to practicing Kung Fu, we have to attend school lessons for three hours every day. We learn history, math, geography and calligraphy. We even learn English. Our master says studying will cultivate good conduct and character. Even when lessons end, my work is not done. There are many chores I have to do. Lunchtime is the best time of the day. I can play and chat with other apprentices. As in boarding schools, even meals are regimented at Wudang. But the food is good. We have three meals a day. Lunch is two dishes and rice. Although the Taoist masters are vegetarian, we apprentices have both meat and vegetables. Life is no picnic for apprentices. There is no dining room. They eat outside every day. In winter, it snows. It's all part of the Wudang training program to strengthen mind, body, and character. While the regime is tedious for a 10-year-old, Jade Dragon still finds some things attractive. When I grow up, I want to be a Kung Fu master. Mount Wudang is a place of pilgrimage for the followers of this style of Kung Fu. It is their Mecca. Forty-five-year-old Wang Li Ping is one of the most skilled practitioners of Wudang style martial arts. When he was nine years old, Wang's grandfather introduced him to Wudang style Kung Fu. After thirty years of training, Wang left his home in North China to come here in his pursuit of perfection. Mount Wudang is spiritual and sacred. This is the place where great master Jiang Sanfeng found Wudang Kung Fu. As his disciples, we want to make use of our great master's spirit to practice Kung Fu. Wudang is a good place for enlightenment. The sword is Master Wang's favorite weapon. It is not a theatrical prop, but razor sharp. Wang is a master of the sword. His intense study 
has enabled him to recover sword techniques that have been lost for hundreds of years. Wudang apprentices are trained in the use of many weapons. Scimitar, dagger, long staff, the horsetail whip, the crescent-shaped blade, and of course, the hands. The apprentices are in a formation devised centuries ago. Called the North Star Seven Star Formation, it was inspired by the constellation known in the West as the Big Dipper. In positions corresponding to the pattern of the stars, the fighters cooperate and cover each other. In ancient times, these formations were reckoned to be able to withstand 50 enemies. But sword play isn't very useful in the modern world. So what is it about these ancient rituals that enabled them to persist for so long? In part two, we'll see that people don't come to Wudang just to learn to fight. They come to learn the secret to long life and immortality. Wudang is the birthplace of hundreds of kinds of Chinese martial arts. One, Tai Chi boxing, is renowned the world over. Today, it is practiced by hundreds of millions of people. Unlike other martial arts that stress rapid, forceful movements, Tai Chi exercises are graceful and slow. Their repetitive movements and controlled breathing promote good health and relieve stress. One legend says that Tai Chi boxing was created around 600 years ago when a monk witnessed a fight between a white crane and a snake. He saw in the strike and counter-strike of the fight a living example of the Taoist belief of yin and yang this philosophy, based on opposites, inspired him to create Tai Chi boxing. Yin yang zhe, tian di zhi dao ye, wan wu zhi gang ji, huang di. Tai Chi is represented by one of the most potent images of the East, the yin-yang symbol. It comes from a classic Chinese book, the I Ching. Known in the West as the Book of Changes, it is the foundation of Taoist philosophy. Yin, the dark side of the symbol, is the moon, while yang, the light side, is the sun. Yin represents that which is dark, yielding, soft, and feminine. Yang represents the opposite, that which is illuminated, aggressive, hard, and masculine. When applied to martial arts, yin-yang theory says that the attacking force of your opponent should not be met by more force from you, but rather the opposite. <laughs> To the Western mind, meeting great force with little force sounds like a recipe for defeat. Master Wang shows how Yin's lesser yielding force can overcome Yang's greater attacking force. The boxer is Yang, aggressive and hard. Master Wang is Yin, yielding and soft. Master Wang absorbs the assailant's attacking force and at the same time gathers his own force. He lets the boxer attack, deflects the kick with a lesser force, and then prepares to strike. <laughs> 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 
Taoists believe that everything in the universe is formed from the two forces of yin and yang, the female and the male, the soft and the hard, the black and the white. The opposition of yin and yang may be felt in every Tai Chi move. Yin and yang are complementary. For each movement forward, there's a backward movement. For each upward movement, there's a downward movement. This is the concept of yin and yang. Yin and yang plays a part in another kind of kung fu training unique to Buddha. It is midnight in a graveyard. The choice of this late hour and unusual location for practice is unique to Wudang Kung Fu. There are improvements when you practice Kung Fu at night. Why is it good to practice Kung Fu in seclusion? When the heart is quiet and you are secluded from the outside world, your energies emerge naturally. We have to practice in the graveyard every night. I'm not afraid as I've gotten used to it now. It's part of our training. Each apprentice has to stand in the riding horse position, silent and still, for up to an hour. Other, more conventional schools of Kung Fu view such nighttime activities as strange. But the Taoist masters of Wudang train their disciples to balance the yang energy of day with the yin energy of night so that they can benefit from both. I don't really understand these yin and yang theories. They still make me meditate alone for two hours every night. Our master says meditation is good for purifying one's thoughts, but it doesn't work for me. Each time I meditate, I think of my mother. Master Wang chose to live in complete isolation from the outside world. For ten years, Wang never set foot out of his room. He spoke to no one, not even his family. When Master Wang went into seclusion, his daughter was only four years old. My family didn't object to my decision. My wife is also a Wudang disciple. She's very supportive of me. At that time, I thought that it was important for me to devote more time to practicing Kung Fu. My wife cares about me and is willing to take care of everything for me. Meditation at this level can have undesired side effects. While in seclusion, Master Wang experienced the altered consciousness that practitioners recognize as dangerously delusional. I experienced hallucinations while meditating. I felt restless and distracted. The feelings of discomfort ultimately led to my being worse off physically and mentally. Separation. Isolation. Only his fierce determination to attain perfection in Wudang Kung Fu sustained Wang during the long years of self-imposed exile. Beautiful Dragon's years of practice brought positive results. I've been in Wudang for six years now. The training is tough, but I'm definitely physically stronger than before. The beauty of Wudang Kung Fu is its complexity. I like Tai Chi and Sing Yi boxing, but I like the H pattern boxing style best of all, especially good for the training of one's footwork.
Ba Gua Zhang, or Eight Pattern Style of Boxing, is one of the most famous styles of Kung Fu to originate in Wudang. Ba Gua, or the Eight Patterns in its name, refer to symbols called trigrams that are found in the I Ching, the Book of Changes. Eight pattern boxing uses the circular arrangement of the eight trigrams to establish the rhythm of its movements. Its moves are very fluid to keep the opponent off balance. These turning, spinning movements have three purposes. To confuse the opponent, to exhaust the opponent, and to absorb chi, energy, from all directions. The Bagua style of combat has been compared to guerrilla warfare. The fighter employs subterfuge, speed, evasion and unpredictability. He relies on strategy and skill, not brute strength, to achieve victory. In the hands of a single practitioner, Bagua Zhang is a formidable weapon. When performed by a group, the beauty of its movements can hide their power. There are many variations of eight pattern boxing. Here, black clad apprentices use eight pattern boxing, while white clad fighters are demonstrating a variation called the Nine Palaces Formation. Teamwork is an essential part of Wudang philosophy, and the two groups work in unison to circumvent incoming opponents. I've been in Wudang for two years now. In addition to daily practice, I have to do heavy chores as well. It's hard and it's boring. I'm not used to the life here. I find it really difficult. I have to clean up every day and I don't like it. I have to sweep and dust and do lots of other chores. The worst chore of all is washing clothes. The water is cold and very hard work. It's not so bad in summer, but in the winter, it's awful. I don't have to do the laundry at home. Why should I do it here? I'd rather be doing Kung Fu. Kung Fu is hard too, but in a different way. I like Kung Fu. I started learning it when I was only a child when I was just five years old. My master is Master Yo. He is the 14th generation of Kung Fu masters of Wudang. We apprentices have to respect and obey our masters. There's an old Chinese saying that your master is your father for life. Every week, we all have to perform Kung Fu in front of Master Yo. If we don't show enough progress, Master Yo will teach us individually. He's very powerful, and lessons with him can be painful. Before a lesson, Master Yo gathers his energy through qi exercises. These small movements concentrate qi energy in his fingers. Even small movements can concentrate lots of energy. Individual sessions are a nightmare. I dread them. Master Yu is very strict and his Kung Fu is very powerful. Even masters practice. Master Wang practices because he seeks perfection. But Master Li's reasons for practicing are shocking. If a man practices enough, can he live forever?
The masters of Wudang Kung Fu have believed for centuries that the special movements of their martial arts promote health, release stress, and increase longevity. To achieve better health, Wudang disciples believe we need to enhance and balance the qi energy within us. Qi is a kind of energy that we all have. It's our vitality, our vital spark. Special exercises can build up qi, strengthen it, and fortify it. The key to having good qi is special breathing techniques. There were celebrations when I first came here. Not for me, but for Madame Lee. She was 100. She's lived forever. They say I should learn from her. One hundred and three-year-old Madame Li presides over one of Wudang's three major temples. Although she is frail, she still practices Tai Chi for more than three hours every day, just as she has for the past ninety years. While practicing Tai Chi, one's Qi circulates the whole body eighteen times. Ancient Chinese religious doctrines are at the heart of everything she does. She uses Tai Chi exercises to build her Qi energy. Madame Li takes her exercises very seriously indeed. When I was 18 years old, I was always sickly. But since I began to practice Tai Chi, I've never been sick again. Two years ago, youthful black hair began to replace her aged grey locks. She attributes her longevity and her youthful appearance to the daily practice of Tai Chi. When I practice Tai Chi, the Chi circulates through my entire body. There are no sores on my body. As you can see, my hands are still very soft and dexterous. The lessons of Taoism may lead to a longer life, but for now, they don't mean much for a ten-year-old. With no television or computer games, Jade Dragon and her friends make their own entertainment. Six of us share the room. In addition to sleeping here, we chat and play games together. What type of sport is played backwards? Tug of war. What is it that can be eaten raw and eaten cooked, but can't be eaten washed? Water. After practicing Kung Fu, playing computer games is a waste of time. Master Wang doesn't have time for games. Xing Yi is Wudang's most important internal style of boxing. It is considered an internal kind of martial art because it promotes the health of the individual. In contrast to the flowing, graceful movements of Tai Chi and Bagua, Xing Yi boxing is known for its dynamic and explosive movements. Five basic movements of Xing Yi correspond to the five most important internal organs of the human body. The lungs, the kidneys, the liver, the heart, and the spleen. The movements are believed to be a form of exercise for the internal organs and help promote longevity. The most talented apprentices are selected to go on tour, performing in different cities in China.
The money from touring is a source of income for the schools. These are the terracotta warriors I bought in Xi'an. Touring is a great honor, but it means even more work. Prior to going to do a performance, we have to rehearse every day. It's difficult for me. Mount Wudang is a sacred place not only to those who seek to master its Kung Fu, but to all followers of Taoism. Its 72 peaks are studded with palaces, temples and shrines devoted to the Taoist gods. Taoism has many gods who started out as men. It was by finding the right path that they became gods. Taoist monk Li Xuantong practices Kung Fu for one reason, to prolong his life forever. His goal is immortality. By performing the prescribed movements of his preferred martial art, Tai He Boxing, he plans to become a Taoist god. Master Li believes that through constant training he can maintain good health. But for him, long life is not enough. One of the most important features of Taoist religion is a belief in physical immortality. And Master Li believes that he can achieve it through meditation, fasting, and through perfection of his Tai He boxing. But not only does Master Li endeavor to live forever, he also wants to be worshipped like a god. I want to become a Taoist god. Next time you come, I may not be here. I'll go into the remote mountains <laughs> to practice. <laughs> I don't think a human being can become a god by practicing Kung Fu. And anyway, I don't want to be a god. For me, I can see the wisdom in Kung Fu. It strengthens my vitality. How many kinds of physical trainings are good for health? I'm happy with my Kung Fu now, as I no longer feel sick so easily, and I am no longer weak. For centuries, Mount Wudang has produced some of China's greatest martial arts masters. But these mystical peaks serve as a paradise for all Taoists, not just for those who practice Kung Fu. Each seeks to find their own path. The path of some, like Masters Wang and Li, is through the perfection of their martial arts. Others come to live as hermits in contemplation. There is space for each to pursue their own Tao in their own way on the slopes of Mount Wudai. Some hermits retreat from human society and live as recluses for years or even decades. Some live in the temples and shrines that cover Mount Wudang. Others live in cave dwellings. No one knows how many hermits there are. Theirs is a floating population that has never been counted. But some people are more suited to isolation and loneliness than others. Hello? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, mm. When will you come visit? 
สร็จอือฮึอืม I came back the day before yesterday. Jade uses the film crew's telephone to call home. Jade was an abandoned child adopted while still a baby. She misses her adoptive mother, who dotes on her but is far away. Jade is a mischievous child, and she frequently got into trouble at home and was beaten by her adoptive father. Although her brother and sister were not unkind to her, she was bullied by her cousins. So her mother sent her here to Wudang to learn kung fu and to find her way. Going back is a pain. Some relatives invite you to come for a couple of days. Then other relatives ask me to come for a few days. They want me. To perform kung fu, it's really a drag. So I hate going back home. Beautiful dragon is happy to stay in Wudai. In fact, he's thinking of staying forever. When I grow up, I want to be a monk and be a keeper of the Taoist temple. As for my martial arts, I just want to stay in the temple and continue practicing. It's a big decision for a teenager to make, and as an only son, it's not one likely to make his father happy. By becoming a monk, Beautiful Dragon may well become the 15th link in a chain of Wudang masters going back 15 generations. But it also means that his own family tree will die out with him, because the Taoist monks of Wudang are celibate. Others have faced the same choice. Madam Li has been a Taoist nun and celibate since her teens. She doesn't regret not having a family. She has been single-minded in her devotion. Her path, her Tao, has been here in Wudang. Taoism is an ancient Chinese philosophy. It is based on the writings of the sage Lao Tzu. It says that each person must find their own way, their own path to fulfillment. Be persistent and determined. Be devoted to Tao. From the time she first arrived in Wudang as a teenager, Madam Li's entire life has been spent on these mountain slopes. First, she was a nun, then a priestess. Today, she is the head of one of Wudang's most important temples. In addition to being famous for her skills in Tai Chi and for her longevity. She is legendary in Wudang for her great compassion. She is philosophical about its great cost. Without bitterness, one will never know sweetness. When Madam Li was born, China was still the celestial empire, and an emperor still sat on the dragon throne. She was already twelve when the last emperor was toppled from that throne. Like Jade Dragon. Madam Li had a hard childhood. When she was six, she was sold to another family as a child bride. While growing up, she was repeatedly beaten and abused by her husband's family. When she was fourteen, against her family's wishes, she snuck off to Mount Wudang. There, underneath a cypress tree, she found her Tao, her way, and decided to become a nun. Today, that tree is a place of adoration for Madam Li's disciples. Mistress Li teaches us to be persistent and sincere. One must persevere at all times. During the 1950s, following the Chinese Communist Revolution, the People's Republic launched new measures to fight feudalism and superstition. The monks and nuns of Mount Wudang were ordered to renounce their religion. At that time, the Liberation Army tried to force Madam Li and her apprentices to leave their temple. In spite of their cruel beatings, Madam Li remained steadfast, protecting her apprentices. In protest, she went on hunger strike, kneeling for days within the temple itself, swearing never to leave. 
They caught her. She was dragged on the ground for several miles. Her back was seriously hurt and bled profusely. At that time, they wanted to execute her. You can see now her back is marked with the thick and hardened scars of her ordeal, but she never yielded. Madam Lee persevered. Her belief was strong. It needed to be. A foe more fearsome than an army was about to come knocking. I have three bowls. 取而保之，亦曰慈。老子。The founder of Taoism, Lao Tzu, said that we must be merciful and compassionate to others. Madam Li has spent her life putting his words into action. In 1960, there was a great famine. Millions of people starved. At a nearby noodle factory, Madam Lee spent each day picking up scraps of noodle thrown away by the factory, saving them to feed the hungry. I found dirty scraps of noodles in the sewers of the factory. I would take as many as I could, wash them to make them edible, and then distribute them to nearby families. I never kept even one for myself. Madam Lee's path to Tao has been lonely and tough. Only her faith guided her through long years of hardship. Jade Dragon and Madam Lee are both from the same village, but their paths couldn't be more different. For Jade Dragon, Kung Fu has been the easy part, but she has yet to find her path. I have an adoptive mother, sister, and brother. I hate my adoptive father. I want to kill him. He often beats me. I want to hit him every time I see him with my mother. Although Jade Dragon's adoptive mother loves her very much, her adoptive father treats her very badly. To save her from abuse, her mother sent her to Mount Wudang to learn Kung Fu. My real papa's not there. It's very tough. Our master always punishes us. We have scars all over our bodies. When he punishes us, we can't help crying. Small girl, big decision. When practicing kung fu, Jade Dragon is serious and intent on her task. Although she loves kung fu, with only ten. What she wants most of all is her mother by her side. The road to martial arts is lonely, tough, and never-ending. At such a tender age, it's difficult to be so far from home. Dawn. A new day. Mount Wudang wakes, calling the disciples of Tao to its heart, there to find their way. On the golden summit of Mount Wudang, disciples practice their martial arts as they have countless times before. Day after day, season after season, year after year, in timeless ritual.
This morning, there will be one less dragon on Mount Wudang. Jade Dragon chooses to leave. Yin, Yang, Longevity, Tao, all that can wait. For now, all she wants is her mother. With her sword for protection, this dragon heads for home and for whatever path lies ahead. <laughs>